Let's talk about Alacrity, which is my favorite terminal emulator. So you might be wondering why I consider Alacrity to be the best terminal emulator out there. And it's not really because Alacrity has any killer features or anything that really sets it apart from the crowd. In fact, why I like Alacrity better than the other options is just because Alacrity has all the features that you need and none of the features that you don't. And besides that, it also just has very sensible default configuration options that really makes it easy to use straight out of the box. You don't really have to do much configuration to get everything working the way you want it to. And in fact, the default configuration is so good that the portion of the video where I discuss how to configure Alacrity will probably be very short just because it gets so much right just out of the box. So let me just show you what I mean, for example. So as one example, you can scroll back through the history just with the mouse. That is functionality that some terminal emulators don't have out of the box. You can clear things with control L. You can increase the font size and decrease the font size with control plus and control minus. If you type out the link of something, let's say my personal website, well, you can actually click on this and it'll open up your default browser over here. You can also copy and paste with control shift C and control shift V respectively. And so there are some terminal emulators that are just very bare bones out of the box. Specifically, I'm talking about ST or the suckless terminal, which is another very popular terminal emulator. But the problem with that is it is a little bit too bare bones for my taste. And if you actually want to have a bunch of basic functionality that you think that you should have, like I just showed you all of this right here, no crazy complex functionality, but it's just things that are nice to have in your terminal. And if you wanted all of this, then you would have to patch all that into your suckless terminal build. And it can just kind of get to be a hassle to use that. And so the default experience here is a lot nicer than something like that. But not only does it have the features that you would probably need, it doesn't have any of the features that you don't need. So specifically, I'm thinking of a terminal emulator like Kitty. Kitty is another fast emulator like this that is also pretty usable out of the box. But with Kitty, you also get a whole bunch of features that you might never ever use. So Kitty has an emoji selector in it for some reason. Kitty has tabs, if you want to have tabs on the top of your terminal for whatever reason. It even has a built-in image viewer. It just has a whole bunch of features that you don't really need inside your terminal emulator. I've never used any of those, and so I don't really need it bloating up my terminal. So that's why I like Alacrity. It doesn't have a bunch of extraneous features like that. And Alacrity is also one of the fastest terminal emulators. So you should never really see any lag. For me personally, I never see any lag or any startup delay whenever I start up a new Alacrity instance. Nobody wants to use a slow terminal emulator. And that's why I would recommend Alacrity to anybody who wants a nice usable terminal emulator. Now you can install Alacrity in your favorite package manager. I believe it's in all official repositories as it is pretty popular. For me personally, I'm on Arch Linux, so I installed it with dash s alacrity. So like I said, by default, your configuration will probably be something similar to this already. Basically, the only thing I don't like about alacrity out of the box is the theme, so that's what I'll probably change right away. But let's just get a sample configuration file, and then I will let you configure it to your heart's desire. You can find an example configuration file. It is going to be in slash user slash share slash doc alacrity example. And then this YAML file right here. This is probably where it'll be on your system as well. So what you would do is just CP that, copy that into your dot config slash alacrity folder. You would just create this folder if you don't already. And then from there you can configure it. So let me just show you the example configuration file first. And it's very nice because it has a whole bunch of comments in here that will basically explain every configuration option to you. So as you can see, you can go down here and it'll tell you how to change the window padding and basically walk you through everything here. So if you want a complete list of every single possible configuration option, then you definitely want to check out this example configuration right here. But let's just go into my personal configuration file and just show you the options that I actually use on a regular basis. So let's go into my Alacrity config file. And just so you know, this is written in YAML. So you do have to be a bit careful with the padding right here. If you mess up and forget to leave a tab here or something like this, this can basically mess up the entire file right here. As you can see, it gives me a big error. So do be careful not to miss out on a tab or anything here. Make sure that everything is properly indented. 
and you won't run into any problems. But let's start off with just the padding right here. So I have a padding of five for the X and Y. And of course you can increase this if you want. And one more nice feature about Alacrity is it updates on the fly. So if you see, I change this, I save it, and it instantly changes. So most changes that you make in this config file will be updated immediately. No need to reload the terminal. It will just automatically do that for you, which is very nice. Again, it's not a killer feature, but it's just one of the many niceties about Alacrity. So we have a padding right here. Here we're just setting the class. So maybe you can select this in your window compositor. Down here we have the scrolling section, and this will just be how far that you can go back in the history. So as I showed you before, you can run some long command and then scroll back through here. This will basically just say that you can scroll back through 10,000 lines. And that's probably more than you'll ever actually need. So I just put a nice round number like 10,000 here. And then the multiplier here, which is three. Basically, whenever you scroll back, it will scroll back three lines at a time. And that's just so it goes a little bit faster. If you change this so it only goes back one line at a time when you scroll with your mouse, it's a lot slower which I don't personally like, but you could do that if you want. Next, let's talk about the background opacity. So I just had to turn on my window compositor for this. Uh, if you don't have a window compositor, you'll wanna check out my PCOM video. I'll have a link to that somewhere. And in your window compositor, maybe you can set a transparency for your entire terminal window, but you might not want your entire window to be transparent. So if you just want the background and not the text to be transparent, what you can do is maybe set a let's say 50% transparency right here. Uh, it's not gonna work because I'm inside Vim, but if I open up a new window right here, you can see that we have a nice 50% opacity right here while the text is still completely readable. For me, I don't personally care about that, so I will leave this at one, but you can experiment with that if you want. Next up, we'll have the fonts, and these are pretty self-explanatory, so you can set the font family for the normal font, and then you can also have bold styles and italic styles even bold italic styles. Most of these don't really get used that often. So you can set the family and then specifically the style that you want. And if you wanna find the name of a specific style, then you can run something like FC list and grip out the font that you want. And so if you look in here, you can see that you can select the style bold. You have extra bold, medium, all these different font styles. Down here we have the size, of course. And then one more option down here just to make things look nice. I'm drawing the bold text with bright colors just to give a little bit more color to my terminal. And while we're on the subject of colors, let's go down here. And this is going to be basically the entire theme for my alacrity. You can write hex values in this notation. You can also write it in this notation as well if you would rather. But all of these are going to be pretty self-explanatory as well. You have the background, the foreground, and all of the different terminal colors. And Alacrity is pretty popular, so you should just be able to do a search, maybe for Alacrity color theme, and then the name of your favorite color theme, and be able to find all these values somewhere on GitHub, and just copy and paste these in here. That's basically what I did for my color theme. So you don't have to manually add these all yourself, you can just borrow somebody else's color scheme. But once you're done sending the colors, there's just a few more options down here. You can change the style of the cursor. As you can see, I have a block style right here, but maybe you want to do something else like the beam. This is going to look like this, just a single line instead of the block like I had before. You can even have this be something like underline. And for this one, I think you specifically need to restart the terminal. But as you can see, I have a nice underline under here. So if you want a different terminal cursor, then you can do that. You can set it to blink if you like that. You can set it to on or always if you want it to always be blinking at all times. Now it's blinking. I have the blink interval set at 750 milliseconds. But to be honest, I just leave this at the default. So let me just delete all of this. It will revert to default, which is the block. And finally, you can set key bindings down here. Now I already told you that the default key bindings for Alacrity are very nice. You really don't need to touch it that much because for most of you, the default key bindings will probably be enough. The only additional key binding I have here is this, which what it does is if you were in some folder, let's say my videos folder, and you want to open a new terminal that's in the same directory, what I can do with this key binding is hit super shift enter, and it will start a new Alacrity instance in the same folder as the last one. And you would just write this out like this. So you would type in the key that you want, which is return for me or enter and the mod keys right here. 
So you can just have one of these. It can be something like control or shift. But if you want to make it so you have to press two of the keys at the same time, you can put this pipe in the middle of them. So now I have to hit super shift and enter in order to run that action. And finally, the action right here, spawn new instance. That will just open a new alacrity in the same folder as before. If you want a complete list of every action that you can use, it can be something like scroll up half a page, scroll down half a page, zoom in or zoom out the font size, and a whole bunch of other things. These will all be in the example configuration file that I showed you before. There is a huge list of example key bindings that you can bind here as well as all the actions and all the modification keys and just everything that you could ever need to know about keyboard shortcuts you can find here. But like I said, I don't really use a lot of these just because the default key bindings are so nice. And that's basically it for Alacrity. So to be honest, I don't really have that much to say about Alacrity because by default, it's already pretty great. Now there are a few other features that I'm not gonna show in this video. Like there is a VI mode, so you can just use your keyboard to scroll up here and maybe copy a word here. To be honest, I don't really use it personally, so I'm not gonna go over that in this video. But if you wanna see even more about Alacrity, just let me know. But that's it for now. I would recommend installing Alacrity and giving it a try because honestly, once I started using Alacrity, I've never used anything else. So give it a try and I think you'll enjoy it as well.